hasn't been a while since uh, I've been able to get together with all of you. And there's been a few of you I've been able to visit with for various reasons as well. And I know people are starting to feel a little bit more uh, enthusiastic about the future. And I think many of us, how many, how many folks are, are vaccinated? Anybody here? Show of hands. I probably just violated a bunch of HIPAA laws, but you know, but that's okay. You know, so, so there's, yeah, a lot of folks are getting vaccinated. A lot of folks have had it and have their natural immunities. And a lot of people are just continuing to be practice social distancing and safety. And that's good too. So um, with any luck, we're, we're making some progress on this thing. So um, Bob, did Sally have anything specific that, uh, do we have any specific guests that I didn't know I was hosting? So I don't, I'm so our here. presenter today, uh, our presenter today is Don from MCC. Um, so, I mean, you may want to do like a super duper quick intro around the room or something. Yeah, why don't we do that? We have a couple of new faces. I'm Dave Richens, uh, President CEO of United Food Bank. Um, uh, why don't you just jump in and introduce yourself? We'll start with Mark Young and then go to Joe and then just kind of jump in after that, uh, maybe Carrie. Just kind of going how everybody keeps popping around on my screen so i'm not sure how to go and then we'll get to to don uh, mark hi i'm mark young uh from macy united way hi i'm joe tansel i'm from pause day crystal community center in mesa carrie I wasn't sure if I should go. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Shulman. I'm with Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central and Northern Arizona, and we have a house in Mesa. Very good. Joy. Can't hear you. You're not on mute. But Joy Levine. There you are. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah. Joy Levine with First Things First, uh, representing the Southeast Maricopa region. Good afternoon. Very good. Thank you, Lee. Lee Huff with Congressman Andy Biggs' office. Very good. Linda? Linda Haskell, Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Kristen? Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Harvey. I'm with Jewish Family and Children's Services East Valley Healthcare Center. Eric? Hello. My name is Eric Jenkins. I am with Streets of Joy. Wonderful. Christine? I'm Christine Haas, and I'm with No Webster Schools. Marlo. Hi, I'm Marlo Loria and I'm with Mesa Public Schools. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, Jeff Bear, Copa Health. Scott. Scott Seeley uh, with Impact AZ, Coalition of Nonprofit Organizations. And I, I can't believe I'm the, the first one to observe that, that Dave and Mark are, are bringing on the uh, Miami Vice color scheme for us today. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. Pop the collar, Mark. Pop the collar. <laughs> Can't do it. Sharon. Hello, good afternoon. Sharon Bell. I'm a MSW intern at ASU. Very good. Mark, the legendary Mark Gustazzi. Sporting the Miami Vice color as well. Cyan, to be exact. Mark DiStasi with House of Refuge. All right, my screen just totally changed. Allie? Hi, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm Allie Rutier. I'm with the American Heart Association Greater Phoenix. Very good. David Burkhardt. How's it going? Uh, Dave Burkhardt, uh, Ross Farnsworth, East Valley YMCA, um, Executive Director. Very good. Michael? Boss? Michael Voss, Mesa Community College. Welcome, David Hughes. Dave Hughes, the New Leafs East Valley Men's Center. Hello. Very good. Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Emmons from Cigna. Um, I'm also a board member of the Mesa Chamber, and I'm not seeing my much more well-informed um, community engagement <laughs> uh, lead, Michelle Berg, on this call, but uh, she's usually on this call to... Uh, to see what y'all all have going on and see if there's any way Cigna can engage. So if there's anything, I can always take it back to her. Yeah, we've enjoyed our, our working with, our opportunity to work with Cigna here recently at Holman Elementary. Raven. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Raven with uh, A New Leaf here at the La Masita campus. 
Very good, Denise. Denise Carter. Hello. How are you? Good. Introduce yourself. What organization are you with? I'm with Overflow Mission, and we service the homeless population and individual food insecurities by providing them with emergency food boxes, snack bags, and personal care items. Can you say the organization you're with again? Overflow Missions. Overflow Missions. Very good. Uh, Sharon. Sharon Bell. All right, well, Hi, um, sorry about that. Uh, I'm Sharon Bell, ASU. Uh, I'm an MSW intern at ASU. Naomi. Hi, I'm Naomi with All Pro Anytime Transportation. I just want to learn a lot more about nonprofits to see where I can help out. Excellent. Welcome, Carla. You're on mute. Carla, you're, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Welcome. It's been a long day. I'm Carla Newby. I'm the facilities manager for 24 7 in touch, and I chair the volunteer committee. Welcome, Carly. Good to see you again. Hi, it's good to see you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm Carolee Hagen. I'm executive director with Metropolitan Youth Symphony, and it's good to see everyone. Elaine, did I pronounce that right? You did, as always. Helene with Acronis SCS Vets. How is everybody? Excellent, excellent. Fran Francesca. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Great. Good, what good. Uh, organization you with? Uh, yep, so I am the campus director for 24-7 In Touch. So excited to be here. This is actually my first uh, nonprofit vitality meeting. So I'm eager to hear what we're all about here. Welcome. We have a we have a big crowd. Okay. There's been a few people that have popped in now from Lynn. Lynn am I pronouncing that right? I'm Lynn Davies. Uh, I am also with 24-7 In Touch. I'm a training facilitator over there and I co-chair our volunteer committee with Carla. Excellent. Uh, Sabrina. Hi, I'm Sabrina Quigley. I'm with Mesa Public Schools and Nutrition Department. Excellent. Welcome. Um, anybody I'm missing? A Gorman? Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Gorman. I am also with 24 7 in touch. I am the recruiting manager. Very good. Um, we, who am I, Melissa, Melissa, my Melissa, how can I forget my Melissa? It's the Almond Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Forrester with United Food Bank. Uh, we have a phone number, 251-1551. I think that's Naomi on the phone. Okay. All right. If I missed you, unmute yourself, and we'd love to have you introduce yourself. I think we got about everyone. I'm Debbie okay. Kaiser. I'm with the Home Two Suites by Hilton. That's under construction at Longbow Golf Course. Oh, wonderful! How's the hotel doing? You guys open? Yeah, uh, open. June, mid June. Good. Okay. Well, today I guess Don, you're presenting. Don, why don't you introduce yourself and it's all yours. Awesome. I didn't know if there was going to be any meeting type stuff taking on. So um, I'm Don Rhodes. I am the service learning program coordinator at Mesa Community College. I am grateful to be here and I guess talk to you about our what we do at the college and some opportunities. And I love seeing so many familiar faces. As a lot of you were introducing yourself, I could think of stories that we've had with Melissa at the food bank. Um, even with Bob and Linda through the chamber of where our students have done service learning to our students, um, faculty and staff doing an evening um, meal um, service at Paz de Cristo uh, to, yeah, oh, Mark Young and Dave Richardson's, I guess with Melissa too. There's too many things that we've done with Macy United Way 
and the food bank. Um, it's yeah, I could go on and on almost a lot of your partnerships and some of you are new and um, new to us. So hopefully um, I share some stuff that may be of interest for you as a new partner, or even spark some um, excitement for our current partners. I am very much of a flow with, I don't have really a candid presentation. So um, I have my chat opened. If you have questions for me, um, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I also, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask questions, um, like let's do this. I wanna make your time um, like this hour or the time that I have. So actually Linda, speaking of that, how long do you want me to present? Is there business items? Um, what actually, um, thinking about 15 minutes and 15 then, minutes. um, about five minutes for, um, a questions that folks may have or inquiries would be great. So, okay. Wonderful. So as you see, I dropped my, um, contact information in the chat, um, there, so you have it. So our department, actually I'll share our, my screen for a minute. I'm going to open up to our department's website. Um, which I have there. So is everyone seeing my department's website? Yes, okay, cool. Um, let me rearrange all the speaking people um, and reopen my chat. So you see their website, not my logo, correct? Okay, I'm seeing Bob's head shake, yes. That's the website. Perfect every platform's a little bit different on where they move all your controls to. Wonderful. Um, so we coordinate service learning and civic engagement activities. At the college, one of our four student learning outcomes is civic engagement. Civic engagement in essence is mobilizing or, or having people, um, I like to say, be engaged um, enlightened citizens on what they can do to improve their community, both in the political and non-political aspects. And service learning is just one way of the many ways that we um, have students do that. How many of you know, if you know for sure, and I said, I kind of give some of you answers. If you know that you are currently a partner of MCCs, drop um, me in the chat, drop a me in the chat. If I didn't tell you this, I like to use the chat. So drop a me in the chat. Joe is, yeah. Well, actually, Joe, I need to get with you because you have it, you had a change in person. So I don't think we actually have you guys listed as an active partner. Jewish Family Services. Are we up? We've done stuff with Kristen. I forget where Raven, where you're from. Um, okay. I'm from when I leave. We have Bridget Talty. Okay, cool. Uh, awesome. She's the volunteer manager and the volunteer coordinator. Okay, thank you. Very cool. Okay, awesome. So I just kind of wanted you to get practicing using the chat um, there. Cool. So service learning, if you're not familiar what service learning is, our definition is that it is, if it's going to open, a teaching and learning method that combines meaningful service to the community with academic instruction. In essence, what does that mean? We get our students to go out into the community to serve at organizations that's tied to their course curriculum. It's really important. We don't necessarily call them um, volunteers that, because it's really about what are they learning um, tied to class? Yet they are volunteers because they're non-paid. Um, yet they need to do a service that's related to their academic um, instruction. So for instance, um, one of my instructors, she's a critical reading instructor. And basically she has them pick a topic that they're passionate about and then go do the service. And while they're doing that service, critically reading um, articles or um, having discussions around that um, subject matter. So for Dave and um, Melissa, it's an easy fit. Like a lot of students are really um, passionate about hunger issues um, and like Mark, uh, homeless issues and how do we serve those people and how are they you know, getting those needs met? And so then they'll go do that service anywhere from typically like 10 to 40 hours if it's embedded in a course um, that they're going to do that service. 
And we have it in actually every academic discipline at the college, um, yet not all instructors incorporate it into their course as far as service learning goes. Um, yet a lot do in a lot of different disciplines. We offer service learning at the college two different ways. One way is where, like I already mentioned, it's embedded in a traditional course um, that they, um, the instructor, instead of giving an extra test or presentation, they've taken out um, that assignment and then they're incorporating the service learning hours. Because what's the best way most people learn? Drop it in the chat. What's the best way most people learn? Experience hands on by doing practice experience integrating. Yes, yes, yes. You are exactly right by doing. And a lot of our instructors understand that. And so that's why they break down their classroom walls and have them get engaged in that service um, so that they're tying in what they're teaching them. Unique to MCC is we also um, offer where students can register for a standalone one, two or three credit hour class. And then in those courses, they do 50 hours of service per credit they've registered for. So for one credit class, obviously that's 50 hours of service within a given semester. Um, I usually will recommend to a student to register for one credit, complete it, and then register for the um, another one. Um, some know if they, um, like I have a student right now, Nancy Collicott, um, she knows she's going to be able to commit to that 150 hours in a semester because she is that um, organized and scheduled and stuff. Yet typically, um, most students register for a one credit class. And it's really cool. It's more of an internship type class yet because they're not going into a specific um, class to sit day and time, yet they're paired up with the faculty advisor and then they have learning objectives that they're going to um, achieve while they're doing their service. I should preface, I should have also prefaced, so at Mace Community College, we are really fortunate that we have a standalone department that coordinates the service learning and civic engagement. Not all my sister colleges do. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Maricopa Community College um, system. We are a 10 college system um, and MCC is just one of those 10 colleges. For instance, my sister college at Chandler Gilbert, uh, um, Scottsdale, Gateway, and whatnot. Though we're sister but, colleges. Everyone but Don, kind of, but, yes. but Don, Mesa yeah. Community College is the college in that 10 college system, right? I, you know, it's <laughs> it the is. largest by far. Very impressive, the work that gets done there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't you. want yes. you to under, undersell yourself. <laughs> oh, well, yes, we are, you know, we are really, yes, blessed. We are one of the largest community colleges actually in the nation. Um, and then when Dwayne Oaks, he's our director of our department. When he was actually recruited from Chandler Gilbert, shh, don't tell, well, everyone from Chandler Gilbert knows that he was pulled. Um, president Christensen, who was the president at that time, he really wanted to expand the service learning and civic engagement program. And so he brought um, Dwayne over and then I joined him shortly thereafter. I was in the nonprofit leadership and management program at ASU, needed to do an internship. Obviously, MCC is not a nonprofit, so I just a little insight. I got to be paired up with our district's foundation, which is a nonprofit with my placement site at the college. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we are the largest. We are grateful that at that time, President Christensen saw the value and put a dedicated faculty director to it. And then we've since grown. Um, so we have myself as a service learning program coordinator, uh, my coworker who's our civic engagement program coordinator. Um, we have an admin secretary and then a couple other um, part-time staff who assist us. Yet why I also say this, because when we talk about partnerships is that um, all our, my sister colleges may do it a little bit different. They may have a staff, sorry if you're hearing some banging on the other side of the while I told my son I was in a presentation. Um, they have a staff member or a few people in like other departments who may coordinate it, or they just have a faculty member who is um, intrigued, interested in, um, in service learning and implementing it. This is another thing that's important to know about MCC. Our median age of our students is actually about 26. 
which most people think the college community college student, the, their entry level 18, that's not necessarily our students. However, you'll have, we have from 18 to 80, right? Um, Dean Voss, I saw, I don't know if he's still on the call. Um, like our age gamut, like is, it's pretty awesome. Um, well, actually we even have younger than 18. And so it's pretty cool. And the other cool thing about MCC students is they live and work everywhere. Um, so I know I heard um, some of you don't also, like you have programs in Mesa, yet you have programs of broad, like at, in other cities and stuff. Our students might be able to even meet needs in those communities because our students have even driven as far as Boys Tom's Arboretum to do their service learning. So if you know where that is, um, that's a pretty hefty drive. Yet they were excited about the service opportunity they could do and the need they could meet there. Um, so in essence, again, service learning is combining the service. And it's been really, really cool to see, especially at this time, what our partner organizations have been able to offer. We have not skipped a beat. Some of my sister colleges since last March have they've halted their service, their civic engagement program, because they're like, we don't know what to do. Like, we don't know how to handle this. And our faculty were like, no, we still want this experience. So we are like, okay. Um, so we offer in-person service if it's available. Um, if you have virtual service opportunities, we love those. Um, and that was a new addition this last you know, year that we added was that virtual because usually most service was obviously hands-on direct service. And it's been pretty cool what our students have done and been able to do and the creativity of both the partners and the students to meet those educational needs. Um, question, so far are things clear as mud? If, it, if this is making sense and kind of interesting, drop a yes in the chat. Seen some yeses. Yes. Yes. Yep. Cool. 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 Civic engagement. I mentioned that that's one of our student learning outcomes. Um, and that, um, by definition, you can read it on the screen. That's our definition. Um, yet we've expanded what we do for the civic engagement. It's been really cool. Um, so we have our civic action hours every Wednesday at 12. So kudos and shout out. I have to give this big shout out to Dave Richens. Um, he, we had one of his staff members who was supposed to speak last Wednesday. And we literally found out the day before, like in the afternoon, it was <laughs> that she was no longer with the food bank. And um, we were like, uh, what are we going to do? My coworker actually coordinates it. Um, and I call him up and I'm like, hey, Dave, can you help us out? And he, he, he uh, got one of his staff to jump in. So give Dave, can you give the emoji a reaction con? Give him a clap or Melissa's doing it here. Because um, that's the cool things. And it was cool because then they got to share about the organization. So if you have any cool topics around leadership and civic engagement that you might want to be on our schedule for next academic year, we are already planning. So watch out, Melissa and Dave. Um, we'll probably be asking you for another one of Mesa, Hunger and Mesa. So we've had a lot of different um, lineups as you can, human trafficking um, awareness. And you're welcome to join us on these workshops as well. So tomorrow I'll be doing one with a couple gals from a couple, uh, some of our partner organizations around servant leadership. Um, this is a cool thing we've implemented this last year, again, to meet a need of students and faculty is our civic engagement scorecard. Um, and this is just a list and why I show you it is it's a list of activities that students can do around civic engagement and they pick it. Um, I should have probably loaded it before. Anyways, there's um, stuff about like donating food to, you know, food bank. Um, learning about the United Nations Sustainable Goals. The very first one is what is civic engagement? So that's been really cool. And so if you even look at that and you're like, oh, I could help students, you know, meet that one. Um, oh, serve as a committee member of an engagement team. Oh, that's an MCC. There's one that's like that same type that I was reading from number 14. 
serving on a board, I forget where it is, serving on a board um, of a, oh, um, organization, how about 21? Speak at a community municipal gov school or governing board county meeting. Maybe so you know how to get students in. So this has been a really cool addition that we've added to um, the list of activities and things that students can do um, there. Again, finding a need that's helping students. And the, um, we're strengthening our engagement teams and our engagement teams, um, I should have watched my time. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing um, there. Our engagement teams really mobilize around four different areas, community service, public, um, forget if they call it public service, meaning more around the works with our veterans. So Lee, I may be contacting you because we're doing our veterans history project. We're capturing stories of um, veterans and their service and going to be compiling a book and um, our environmental engagement team. And if you can see, I have my butterfly wings here. We actually are doing a screening tomorrow with the flight of the butterflies that you're welcome to join us. Um, it's, we, it's really cool. We actually have the director who um, made the film, the documentary. He gave us a message and we'll be sharing that there um, to, let's see, veterans, environmental. Oh, and then stuff around civic engagement, voter registration, voter education and stuff like that. So, whew, I covered a lot. How can you become a partner? That's probably some of the you're, you are interested in. For those who are not a current partner of ours. If you can shoot me an email and I will send you the paperwork. Um, we do multiple ways of promoting you as organizations in your service. Um, real quick, we have an online database. Whatever's in there, whoever's the contact, like I always update at the beginning of the fall, spring semester. That's like your wow, um, like wow piece because they're looking there to see if they're a partner. We have our MCC serves page where if you have an event coming up that you need volunteers, those are like those one time things that you can list there. The virtual service opportunities. Um, let's see, vir the virtual service opportunities. And we also have our community engagement advisory board where we meet three times in the fall, three times in um, the spring. Melissa has been a longtime board member. I think she's almost been with us on the board since the beginning. Um, and it is, and is it, is it a fun committee to be on, Melissa? <laughs> it's usually not boring. Um, so yeah, so there, so send me an email if you have not, if you're not an official partner, or even if you're not sure if your partnership's current, like Pause Day Cristo, I know the gal emailed me, you were having change of staff, it's not currently active. Um, yeah, and th there is the paperwork here online. I prefer to just send it to you email because it's a little wonkier online and stuff. Um, how I mentioned, promote your organization. So it's really great. So what questions, comments, concerns do you have for me? And because I talked about nice, nice, nice job, nice job. It's a Thank neat you. program. If you want to get have these young folks that just interject some energy into the work that you do, inviting them into your organization to participate in a variety of ways is really neat. The only issue I always have is when they put these databases together, the only organization lower on the list than United Food Bank and United Way are the VITA tax services. So sometime I, I'm going to get them to flip it and put the the Z through A instead of A through Z. A new leaf gets all the love. It drives me crazy. So. <laughs> well, actually, our database, they we teach them, they can search it by zip code, um, by need, um, not just, uh, I actually tell them not to look at the alphabetical list um, just because it's just, like, it's just is a laundry list, right? And so I say, here it is if you don't really know anything. And so some of the teachers will call them out saying, oh, you only looked at page one when you're like to do your assignment of partners. Um, oh, I did fail to mention another way we have to promote is we have our volunteer fest, which is a virtual, this last um, semester or last year has been virtual. Um, usually it's an in-person um, um, event. That's really a great networking opportunity as well. So very cool. I will save the um, a chat. So thank you, Dave. Any other questions, comments? And and I'm curious, Dean Voss, did you learn something about our department you didn't know? You can unmute or say yes in the chat. Oh, I, 
I learned all kinds of things. That's why I jumped on. <laughs> I know you're just downstairs sometimes for me, so. Uh huh. Yeah. Cool. Very good. MCC is such. Uh, we're very blessed to have MCC in our community, and it's been a, a center of of Mesa's culture for many many years. A um, lot of a lot of prominent people in this community have spent some time at MCC, and so we're we're grateful that. You know, you're part of the fabric of Mesa and uh, everything from the Rose Garden to interacting on campus uh, and to the volunteers that, and, the, and the educated workforce that you bring to the community is so valuable. So, and this is a neat opportunity. I've known several of the students have gone through these programs and we've interacted with them over the years and they're just really super, super the cream of the crop at MCC really. That those are the ones that participate in, in those service learning programs. So if you have an opportunity to, to host them, I would implore you to do so. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions for Don? I, I have a question. John, in, in terms of your volunteer fairs, um, are you going, are you looking at doing anything in the future, whether it is going to be virtual or um, live? Um, and could you just speak to that? Because I know a lot of our agencies are very interested in that. Okay. Yeah. So we do our volunteer fest at the beginning of the fall and the spring semester. Um, typically it's always the third week of the semester of school because we're getting into the classrooms. We're getting um, to promote it. Um, and so to, I don't know, we have our return to work meeting um, tomorrow. So I'm going to know a little bit more about what the schedule will look like. If it will be in person, I do know faculty have actually asked um, that we still offer a virtual component. Um, as the planner, I'm mentally attempting to figure out how to, to like manage that. So we may do a combination of an in-person and a virtual one. I can tell you if you want to mark your calendars for September 8th and 9th, those are the for sure two dates at the, if it's in-person at the Southern and Dobson campus. If we have something at Red Mountain, that date is to be determined. It'll be sometime that following week. Um, and that's a great way for agencies to network students because class instructors bring their, um, their students and um, other groups and stuff come. So if you're on our list, you'll get the, you know, the information, the save the dates, the registration information, because you have to be one of our partners to um, be able to attend that. Good question, thank you. Thank you. And it's free, oh, that's another perk because not a lot of fairs are always free. Ours are free. And for the last several years, Grand Canyon University has hosted that um, and given away goodies and freebies and stuff. So we're, we're always grateful for their partnership, so. Nice. Thank you, Don. Pass my regards on to uh... Dwayne, Mr. Oaks is, is a good friend and he's done such a great job shaping that program for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, we're glad he's there. He's had such an impact on the youth and our community. So thank you. Hey, um, we have, we keep continuing with the theme of volunteerism for a little bit. Uh, Mark, let me kick it over to you a little bit. I think that uh, as United Way has been, makes United Way's uh, I think all you guys are vaccinated and, and you guys are really ramping up your engagement in the community. I think you have some new volunteer opportunities in the community. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, can I share my screen? I, I just would, anyway. You should be able to. All right. Yeah, Mark, you should be able to. Cool. So um, Nadia, who's on this call, has organized this for us. But here's what we're doing. We received a grant that we applied for from Toyota to get information into the uh, more poverty stricken uh, areas of Mesa about vaccine. So we've partnered with um, the fire department, the East Valley Hispanic Chamber, Food City, uh, the Asian Chamber, Rail, uh, NAACP, New Beginnings Christian Church, us and the Baha'i uh, group to bring volunteers together on Fridays to hang um, door hangers in I believe six languages to tell folks how to register to get a vaccine and they'll receive that from the Mace Fire Department through Food City. 
Um, so we're looking for volunteers that will help us hang those. We're going to do that. Our first shot will be this Friday. Shot is not a pun. This Friday at uh, at the in the Escobedo area, and um, and we'll be doing it for several weeks until we can cover all of those spaces. We are also hoping that we can uh, have conversations with folks so that we can sign them up for the shot right then. So we know that those are communities that uh, either have been resistant or haven't had the full information. So this is a great group that Nadia has put together and we're excited about that. So if you're interested in volunteering, you go to um, www.igotmine.us. It'll take you to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce page, but you can sign up as a volunteer there and then you'll get more information following that. I'm sure that is the two minute version of that. And if you have more questions, Nadia can answer. I only know the skimmy, you know, the top layer of stuff because I don't have enough brain power to know everything and that's involved. I don't do that. I don't work that hard. So uh, Nadia is here, she can take care of that. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you. And, and Lynn has posted a link in the uh, chat that you can click on that'll take you right to that website. So you can capture that uh, as we, but just by clicking there. Um, let's stay on this topic of volunteerism. Uh, I know United Food Bank has shifted away from the convention center after one year of distributing food at the convention center. We closed that down at the end of March. We had our numbers drop uh, far below what they were, but they were still above pre-pandemic levels. But in the meantime, uh, during the course of the last year, we had built uh, some additional capacity and some of our partners, uh, some of you are on this call, uh, folks like Salvation Army and Plenty Community Action Agency and, uh, and Ascend and Methodist Crossing and some of our local churches. And so we've encouraged folks to go. So some of your agencies that do food, you might see an increase in folks coming uh, to seek assistance from you. So um, we're, we're we're regrouping uh, for the next little while uh, to, to kind of catch our breath after uh, a very long year of, of distributing far beyond our capacity. And we're looking at some new uh, concepts. And one of them I wanted to show you guys was this book, Reinventing Food Banks and Pantries. Um, it was written by a gal who is based uh, in, on the East Coast uh, with one of our Feeding America Food Banks, and it's full of fabulous ideas, uh, really some focus, I think, on, on the individual and being far less transactional when it comes to the way we serve our communities. And it's uh, an exciting, some exciting ideas there. So if you have food as part of your program, I would wholeheartedly recommend uh, picking up a copy of that book uh, and, and reading through it. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot of these uh, you know, right now, as we just hand bags of food, we've had to do that because, uh, you know, from a pandemic standpoint, we had to limit our contact. And, and, and as we emerge out of that, I think it's time to re-engage people on that individual level and really dig in on helping people out of poverty and helping people out of the food bank or our food assistance program. We don't want to create dependency on our program through the people that we serve, but we want to use it as a catalyst to launch them out of poverty and into the ability to be gainfully employed uh, within their capacity uh, to uh, you know, procure their own food when they need to. One of the things that really got me thinking as I read this book, it talked about, we oftentimes we make referral to programs and the, the author uses the example of referring uh, one of our clients to, or our friends or neighbors to a GED program. And uh, the, the, person followed up and said, hey, you know, I referred, you know, Melissa to the GED program, but they never called. But we didn't stop to ask them, hey, uh, do you need childcare? Uh, do you need transportation? Do the hours match up your work schedule? And so we make assumptions that just because we made a referral and they didn't follow up on it, that, that this is not a worthy cause perhaps. And so really thinking more holistically about how we can work together as a nonprofit community to meet the multiple and complex needs of people in crisis as they, as they try to emerge from a pandemic situation. So we're excited to engage folks in this community as, 
as we look at what we're doing as a food bank, and, and I know that we'll have opportunities to engage with some of you. Um, so on that idea, I wanted to uh, turn it over, uh, open the floor to folks to talk about either your need for volunteers, if you have that, uh, or some of the, what are your, some of your uh, plans as we uh, emerge on the other side of the pandemic? I'm not declaring that it's over by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm hoping that a lot of us see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we see a little bit of light at the end of our tunnel. And so um, what are some of the things that are happening uh, in, in your organizations as you emerge from the pandemic? We have about 15 minutes before we close this call out. So um, anyone want to share? And Norm, welcome. Uh, we, we didn't, Norm yet, <laughs> the Copa Health, glad to have you here. Yeah, Dave, I, I'd like to share a little bit about uh, post-pandemic uh, life. Um, one of the things that we're talking about at COPA, and uh, for those of you who um, haven't been uh, updated on COPA, uh, we're formerly Mark Community Resources and Partners in Recovery. You know, so much like a new leaf, I'm hoping that someday I won't have to be uh, giving that caveat out there. But we are trying to work uh, not only with our members, and we serve uh, throughout the state about 14,000 people a year. We're trying to work with our um, employment pool, our staff, trying to figure out what uh, things we're gonna take from the pandemic and uh, have them become sort of a permanent fixture. Um, telehealth is obviously one of them, but uh, you know, there's so many other things that uh, we're trying to figure out. Um, uh, events, you know, I, I, I miss so much being able to go see Sally at uh, Mesa Morning Live. I, I, I wish that uh, they had a virtual Mesa Morning Live, but I know um, it probably wouldn't be the same. Uh, and we're trying to uh, figure out how we're going to do that. So right now, we're looking at uh, a hybrid future, and that includes uh, being able to connect long term with a uh, long distance with so many people in the past that we're never able to make it to meetings and events and stuff. Um, also, I, I want to mention this, and I'm going to reach out to Sally Jeff Bayer, who is also on the call, is a big part of this. We have a huge effort coming up in May for Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, COVID has been so um, devastating for so many people on their mental health, not just the people that we serve, but our employees, our staff, our families. Um, you, Dave, I can see that you're stressed out. And uh, we, we just have to figure out how we're gonna be able to deal with uh, that in the future and um, take those take those efforts, uh, those hybrid efforts forward, here. so. I think it is, but. Yeah. So that's, that's what's going on with us, but we're looking at uh, taking the, I, I tell people all the time, they're really, I'm reticent to say there's uh, silver linings in COVID, but we've found a lot of silver linings in COVID that we're gonna be able to uh, take forward and uh, we're excited about it. Norm, thank you. Yeah, if there's any, I think, takeaway from from COVID, it's, it's innovation. Um, I've always marveled at America's ability to innovate itself out of its worst problems. Um, in some ways, we innovated ourselves into some problems this time around uh, in some measure, but uh, there has been a lot. I mean, I think uh, we've left ahead. I mean, how how complicated would it have been to try to organize these kinds of calls? I mean, we have, let's see, how many people do we have on the, on the call? About 30, 30 folks. I think we peaked out at 37. You know, typically, we'd all try to get in the same room. We'd all have to drive over there. And I, I've... I didn't ever overuse Zoom, and I so I still love the Zoom call. I love that I can be in my office, I can see all of you and interact with all of you, and I can get back to work without having to get in the car. Although uh, it does keep me from being able to go home early sometimes. But uh, uh, Joe, why don't we kick it over to you? I, I always go. To, I like Joe's my go-to guy as far as uh, you know people thinking about innovation and how to serve a, a, a population that that is is you know, vulnerable in our community, but full of uh, just redeemable souls, I, I think is a great way to put it. If you get to know some of the folks that are patrons of Paz de Cristo, as well as the staff, uh, you guys do great work over there. And it's neat to see some of the progress that happens with some of the friends and neighbors that patronize your organization. So Joe, you got any innovations coming out of COVID that you want to share? You know, thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, this has been quite a this has been quite a year to innovate. 
um, we're actually, you know, starting to think, well, how, you know, how do we move on from where we're at today? Um, you know, it, it is encouraging that the population is beginning to get vaccinated. Volunteers are coming back to Paz de Cristo um, more and more comfortable with uh, serving the homeless population. We haven't opened our dining room and we don't really foresee opening the dining room anytime real soon, um, but we are talking about a hybrid and, you know, maybe serving some people uh, in the dining room, spacing them out as well as outside. Um, so, you know, we are um, continuing to look at how can we serve the community, serve them better, you know, with the heat, the heat coming on, you know, it is, we would love to put everyone inside our air conditioned dining room, but not everyone's quite uh, ready to come together in a big congregate setting. So, you know, it's still a challenging, still a challenging time, um, but it really is encouraging as I'm seeing, you know, I ask groups of volunteers that come, we're starting to see some corporate groups come back um, and asking them, you know, who, who here has been vaccinated? And, you know, it's wonderful to see a lot of people raising their hands. So we're, we're getting, I think we're starting, I see the light now at the end of this long, crazy year that we've been in. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Joe. Yeah, I, I've been watching with interest, Paz, uh, Christo, your work to see, you know, are you going to be able to get people back on campus more fully? And I, mm -hmm. I, you guys have done a great job. Great job. Uh, anyone else? Eric, Denise, Nadia, Marlo, Lynn, I'm trying to grab some folks. Oh, I had just posted that or in the chat, I've got Amazon has been a really good um, partner of ours, giving us a lot of resources um, from hygiene products to household items to get out to some of our families. And now they have 24 big trucks or five trucks with 24 pallets. I've got chips coming out of my ears. We're getting them out to schools because <laughs> it's testing. And so if you need chips, then they're the good stuff. Like they're good, they're good chips. They're not like, you know, these are name brand Frito-Lays. So I'm truly trying to sell it to you. Boxes and boxes of chips. So if you just stick your name and email address and phone number in the chat, I'll record it. And either me or my secretary will reach out to you to see if we can coordinate getting you a pallet as we make deliveries kind of to other schools. We can swing by your place and drop off a pallet of chips as well. Nice. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, I heard that Amazon has been pretty generous with Mason County Schools. Uh, you know, maybe there'll be ways that we can help you guys distribute some of that stuff in the future. So, well, just kind of as a quick note, I, you know, we are trying to work on some, we're working on a master planning of what we could do with some of our campuses that are really under capacity. And there's this idea that's been floating around of a, a community center where it could be a hub for some of our social services for our families, but also a hub for groups like this to be able to get together and like have kind of a one-stop shop of resources that we're able to get because of our school district and we're so large. So we really have kind of the capacity to be able to manage a lot of these things. Plus we're using them as work-based learning opportunities for our students. So our students are involved in distributing and organizing um, what we call our little mini Amazon distribution center. So as those conversations start to percolate with the city and with the school district, I, you know, eventually I'd probably like to present some of those ideas to you guys to get that feedback, because I think this would be a great opportunity, another place for us all to come together to be able to serve um, all of our, you know, residents of Mesa, just not our, our students and our, their parents, but being able to help support the work that you guys do within your organizations as well. Yeah, cool. Let us know when you're ready. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, if there's one thing, another thing the pandemic uh, may have revealed is the opportunity to collaborate more and partner more on stuff. I know we have uh, throughout the course of the pandemic, but that's been a great side effect as, 
I think there's a lot less operating in silos. Eric, you have something to share? Yeah. I saw you yeah. came off mute. How are you, sir? <laughs> yeah, sure. I am doing excellent. I cannot complain. It wouldn't matter if I did, you know. But strangely enough, uh, we came out of this pandemic situation a lot better than we went into it last year, you know. We've increased in almost every area. I've added capacity to the homes. Now I'm over 100 capacity in our Mesa area. Uh, we're going to be going to three days at our food bank now. Uh, I think we're going to pick up about six more stores from United Food Bank, and uh, which would take our total to right under 20. So we're going to be investing in another truck, you know, so uh, we can split up the teams and things of that nature. But we 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 built a more holistic approach to our recovery platform. Uh, we just got certified as a, a, a one component got certified as an Arizona Residential Housing Association, and I still have the Streets of Joy nonprofit that is about ministry and recovery. So they kind of work hand in hand. Whereas if we get a guy who cannot sustain himself in a hundred and fifty dollar a week kind of environment, instead of going homeless. We just transfer him over into the uh, the long-term six-month program in which he'll get a job and come out anyway. So, and 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 we we've been able to identify some key partnerships to to, to now start maybe allowing these guys to get more uh, concise uh, mental health services. Uh, so that's going to be great. We just partnered with the ASU Law Department, you know. So we're going to be working on a official recidivism reduction page, I mean, reduction program as partnered by uh, uh, ASU and, and Streets of Joy. So I'm excited about that. Now that the uh, Congress is gonna come back into play, you know, so I'm excited. All of these things that we're talking about now is something that we did not have when we went, in, when we went into the pandemic. And so in lieu of everybody's coming back together, we're gonna to look at somewhere around the middle of June and we're gonna have a big old Commonwealth Day on our on our parking lot. And we're gonna give away as much stuff as people can bring in. It's, a, it's called a, a Commonwealth Day is you bring something and you get something back. So bring something that you don't want, that you're, you, you're, you don't use anymore. And then hopefully when you get there, there may be something at the facility that you do want and that you can use. And we're just gonna do partner swips, partner flips. And we're doing that, like I said, in conjunction to this year for sure, we're gonna open our first thrift store somewhere in the Mesa metropolitan area. So, I mean, we're excited. I mean, the all the jobs have come back. Our staffing company now is staffing now at 100%. The construction company is three months behind. So, I mean, I, I, I guess I kind of say that that was a silver lining in the pandemic in the sense that it forced us all to come together and really uh, uh, run deep into our, some of our floor deliverables in the community. So we actually increased some of the things that we do. We, we're going to increase our food bank days. We're going to increase our support services. Uh, we've given away 15 laptops now to needy families. And as soon as uh, we get the next shipment in that we bought and we can rebuild them, we're going to have at least 30 more laptops that will be available for any family that doesn't have a laptop for, you know, in-home school training. So we're excited about what we're doing and we're going to reach out into the Mesa community even deeper this next year. Eric, thanks for showing. You guys always do amazing work. It's, we're glad to have you as a partner and we're glad to have you in our community. Michelle, you got startled there a little bit a second ago. Somebody looked like somebody walked in on you. <laughs> they sure did. I am at Command Central right now um, at our Nartera location with our market president, Kim Shepard, and she just stepped in to say goodbye. I wanted to um, just make sure to join the call today to tell you all about the exciting news um, that Cigna will be the manager of a um, climate-controlled point of distribution vaccine um, uh, operation um, opening on 422 at Westworld um, in Scottsdale. We are going to be vaccinating 5,000 um, folks per day, seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's a true walk-in uh, walk um, mm. experience. So um, we are just beyond thrilled to be able to give back to the community and really try and get us over the hump. And um, we'll be introducing 
a great new uh, concept into the market, um, expanding on the community of immunity and getting back to getting back together. So um, we do have volunteer opportunities. I did put it in the chat and um, there's a link in there. Um, any any volunteers are, are welcome. You can imagine we'll be needing about 200, um, 200 volunteers per day to, to keep us running smoothly. Um, and I think that's I think that's all I have to say about that. But we're re we're really excited to be able to give back. Congratulations, that's exciting. Very good. All right. Well, we're about the, at the end of our hour. Uh, it's great to see everyone. Anybody else have anything they want to add uh, for the good of the order? If if you would mind, I'd love to chime in for just a yes, moment. Yes, just please. Thank you so much. I just want to make sure everyone knows uh, a little bit about 24-7 InTouch. So we are definitely all about giving back to the community. We love being part of Mesa. Um, and one of the reasons we wanted to get on uh, to this meeting, and that's why I have, you know, we have our recruiting manager here. We have our volunteer coordinator uh, and chairs here uh, because we have our folks that are just chomping at the bit now. They see the light at the end too, and they're ready to get back out there and start helping people get back to normal or whatever our new normal is gonna be. So thank you for sharing any of the volunteer opportunities that you have here. We're definitely gonna jump into that. Um, and also, I know a lot of your guys' uh, nonprofit organizations are also really hyper-focused, and I heard that a little bit on the, on the call today, to get people back to work and um, um, help, help relieve some of their dependency on some of those food sources and banks that we have right now because we did see that increase and so please know that we are also a major employer in mesa we need to hire over 300 people by the end of this month um, and our trending is pretty consistent like that so if you guys are ever wanting to partner in some kind of program where we're getting people back to work please let us know we'll see what we can do to try to to help that along Thank you. 24-7 In Touch is the name of your organization, correct? Yes. Excellent. It's, uh, Angela posted it in the chat. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll be reaching out to have a chat. So, Melissa, make sure you grab that contact info. Thank you. All right, yeah. five o'clock. Oh, Mark. Mark. Yeah, I just want to ask Fran uh, Francesca, is, um, is there is it skilled labor? Can you, I mean, we, you know, our vet center is putting folks to work all the time. But what, what kind of folks are you looking for? Um, so typically it's going to be entry-level call center type environment. We okay. work with a variety of different clients uh, and provide them their call center services. Sometimes you'll see some uh, team lead or management type positions that are posted, but more often than not, the ones you'll see posted on our site are the customer service representative. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah, it's neat to see people going back to work. Yeah. Much rather have them working and shopping at the grocery store. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, everyone. Until next time, I bid you all adieu. Thank you. Stay connected to Mesa Chamber social media, email newsletters, Monday morning message, and mesachamber.org to always know what's happening at your Mesa Chamber.